shortly. I want you to enjoy your cell phones. If you want to look at your phone, go ahead. I don't mind. Use it. Just don't be annoying with it. And here we go on with the show. tonight's movie theme, our Earl Lake Legacy Project, hey, will become self-aware tomorrow at 6 a.m. 2023. Let's hear it, folks! Woo! Hey, this is going to be fun tonight. This isn't just a movie, but here we go. So who are you? I am Zoltan Kovash. This is my family. My wife is Kelly. Son is Joel, and Mari is my daughter. This is the picture of us, and uh, this is us actually in Puerto Rico this year. So this is just kind of a quick, uh, our family over the years. Can you hear me up there pretty good? Yeah. I'm coming to you. Megadoc at the Kovacs' house. Megadoc! <laughs> this was the design plans right there. Alright, so what do I do for a living? I work for a company called Shelving Plus Rack Systems, and if we just met casually, I'd say, you know, I design and sell pallet rack systems, automated storage and retrieval systems, mezzanines, implant office, wire partitions. All things warehousing and for manufacturing uh, facilities. Now, what do I really do for a living? That's the funny thing. My resume is blank. Actually, I don't even have one. Because there's not a whole lot to put on it, except for I've worked for shelving and rack systems for 17 years. Why can't I put a lot of stuff on there? I sign NDA agreements every day that I am not to share any of the projects that I'm going to work on. So when I actually meet somebody on a business uh, meeting, I'm basically going to say, I'm Zoltan Kovach. I'm with Shelving Plus for Systems. I help upset business owners who are depressed with their current business model. Someone who's so mad, they are ready for a big change. And I am that change. Who do you know that you care about that I can help? Sounds like you might want to talk to me for business again, huh? All right, so the, uh, when did I move here to Earl Lake? I moved here about four years ago, and it was at the height of COVID. We actually bought our house because it was the only one we could look at. All the rest of the houses you couldn't go into, so my wife and I threw our hands up and said, well, this is the house. We wanted to move on the lake, so you remember this. Four years for two weeks to flatten the curve, wear a mask. Alcohol sales were off the charts, restaurants were failing, businesses were dying, and sadly, mine was too. But, as always, I stick it out. It was barely, we had 
had some rough times, but shelving in Iraq and I stayed together. And I also looked and found for some other revenue streams. And actually, kind of a little history about myself is I'm a little bit of an inventor. So I got really tired of um, restringing my fishing lines. So buddy Pat Michelski, Pat, are you here? No, he's not here, but he helped me with this and my brother helped me with this. So I can take mine off my reels real quick, gives me a spot to store my new fishing line as well. I can cut off the old line there on the right hand pitcher. And then you got to restring your reels. So I developed this as well. Now you put reel, string on your reels. So that helped me get through. But another job I could share with you that I did was at Shelving and Rack. This one doesn't have any sound, but I can walk you through it. So this is uh, Shaheen Auto, and this is their collision center where they hold all their GM parts. So if you guys get in an accident, you take it to them, they got the parts ready as soon as possible. And it's a wreck, it's a mess, it was terrible. They didn't know where their parts were, how many they had, what they need to do, and they just came to me and said, Zoltan, help. So this is what we turned it into. We have multiple trays. Every single item has a spot in the correct spots. Well, what do you do for big stuff? We added shelving on the tops of it. Plenty of room, aisle space for people to open up drawers, move service carts, do anything they do. Everything's barcoded, labeled. They know how many they got of everything. Get your car back up running tomorrow. And that wasn't cheap, but we can do big things. That's what I'm here to show you here tonight. So you might say, well, do you do custom out of the box stuff? Yes, and here's some more stuff I can share with you. This is a 24,000 pound workbench I did for Ford Motor Company. It has a one inch thick slab of pure steel on top of it. They can put anything they want on it. These are our stronghold lockers for Ford Motor with, on top of a mezzanine. This is an ultimate workbench here. So we do a lot of cool stuff. But let's get back to the lake here. So this last year, February 3rd, I completely quit drinking. Uh, I, thought, I felt like it was, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Honestly, things started to turn around for me. My family life was in order, it was wonderful. My relationship with my wife, my kids, uh, with my work, and I've just been loving it. I've been absolutely loving life. So now you know me. Let's talk about the current state of Earl Lake. Earl Lake is gross. It is mucky. We have nasty oxygen problems inside the lake, inside the water column. It's impaired and it's dead. So one day, Jolte looked at me and he's like, Dad, I miss the old house. And I was like, what are you, crazy? We live in a beautiful house on a lake. He's like, yeah, but this house is boring. I said, why, Joel? I said, we have fishing, swimming, paddleboarding, boating, ice skating, wakeboarding. I'm like, you're, you're a spoiled brat. I don't know what the problem is. He says, yeah, Dad, we have all that, but it's gross. And yes, that's a picture of Earl Lake. So again, Earl Lake, gross, mucky, no oxygen, impaired, and close to death. Pretty sad. So I thought about this, uh, I want to make my son happy, of course. What can I do about it? I bought tools and I rebuilt my fishing dock that I had there. I cleaned out all the shoreline, made it look nice. And I bought an aqua thruster. Uh, I want you to check this thing out. This thing is really cool. talk to you today about our number one product, the Aqua Thruster. Do you deal with floating weeds, maybe muck on the lake bottom, stagnant water that even starts to smell a little bit? We have your solution. The Aqua Thruster works perfectly whether you're on a lake, a river, a pond, and even in salt and rack water. With the Aqua Thruster, you'll be able to circulate your waterfront and oxygenate that waterfront will create excellent surface flow. That surface flow will keep all the debris out of the top area of your waterfront. Also, you'll create an excellent push on the lake bottom 
to get all the mud, soot, and sludge out of your waterfront and fast. The aqua thruster produces a water flow of 100 feet all the way up to 300 feet. Depending on the horsepower that you choose, you will have the ability to create a rotation that is perfect for your waterfront. Whether you're looking for 90 degrees or all the way up to 360 degrees, you literally can set it and forget it. Don't want it to run during the day when your kids are out swimming? No problem. Schedule that machine to run at night. We offer an optional timer so that this machine only runs when you want it to run. We offer dock mounted options and freestanding options. Let's start by looking at our dock mounts. This is our standard dock plate mount. If you have a good so anyways, that's a pretty uh, cool invention that I bought. They're about 3,500 bucks, and I said, okay, this thing works. It started working. I'm going to invest some serious money. I put 10 grand in on a bunch of used docks from Facebook Marketplace and hooked the aqua thruster up, and it's just been a long journey just trying to get my shoreline to look nice. I don't know if some of you have seen it or not, but I took some videos of it. And this video is going to be kind of the end of the video. Um, and then it'll go towards the beginning. So here you go. This is my dock at my house. All right, folks, the next morning, everything's starting to really clean up, clear up, starting to look beautiful. I can't tell if it's there's a mass of bass right under there, but you probably can't see it. Probably one of the biggest bass I've seen in this lake. Why is he right next to the aqua thruster? Because it's life. He breathes, he's happy. Here's a bunch of bluegill. He's a huge bluegill. What you have in your shoreline. The emulsion of the first foot of the lake bottom, death layer, methane's coming off, debris coming off, nasty stock. And that's okay, in 20 minutes it'll relatively be clean. It's already clean here at the bottom. Moving aqua thruster. 
See some lily pad roots popping up there too, folks. Debris. Stop. Moving water. They don't move. Everyone passes. Alright, enough with the aqua thruster. So what have we learned? Wherever we put this thing, it breathes life. It makes fish happy. It moves water. It oxygenates the lake. All the bubbles you're seeing is methane being released from the death layer. Pretty soon, tomorrow morning, I'm going to have huge bass. There's going to be sunlight. I'm going to see the bottom of the floor. It's going to be nice, clean, brown sand. And I will take a picture. I'm with the show. So once we clean this out, obviously my kids started having fun. They're down there. We're feeding fish. Um, we're fishing. Mari now, every morning and every night, fishes or feeds the fish. Now, this is Ann McIntyre's property. Um, she doesn't exactly run off her dock and jump in. And I think everybody can see why. So some properties are worse than others. So again, what do we learn here? This is a proven solution, folks. Uh, I've dropped an aqua thruster in. It cleaned out about where you put it in. It's about a 20 foot radius. It works really well. You can legally do it without permits. You can do it with permits, depending on where you put it. Um, it's low cost, it's 3,500 bucks. Your fish will come back, your oxygen will come back. You know, the salty issues we have with the lake will definitely be uh, taken care of. Now, uh, about two months ago, we had the lake board meeting. Um, I wasn't a big fan of it myself because um, they were still talking about spraying more, which was okay, but we lost our rights to vote into a four to one lake board, which I didn't care for personally. Um, there wasn't really a plan set in place. We didn't know what the taxable amount was. And I thought about it and I said, you know, this thing's dead on arrival. And I thought about it and it was kind of a more one dimensional thinking as far as attacking the lake as, a, as an issue, as a problem, solving the problem. So then I found out there's something called weed harvesting and I got really excited. So let's look at what reed, weed harvesting is. This is an actual, this is We Do Boats. They're a weed harvesting manufacturer. Hey guys, I'm Bobby Shields with We Do Work Boats and Software. Come on this side and we'll give you a tour. Welcome to our We Do Boardroom, or as I like to call it, our creation station. This is where we sit with our team and talk about new ideas to help us accomplish multi-tasks on the water, not just aquatic vegetation removal. As you look at the PowerPoint here, you'll see that some of the issues we face globally are invasive aquatic weeds, toxic algae, fish kill, oil and gas spills, garbage, and salt and sediment collection. Taking a look at some of the more common invasive aquatic weeds, we have hydrilla, water chestnut, cattails, Eurasian milfoil, duckweed and water hyacinth. These are weeds that are found globally and can be handled in a multitude of different ways with different attachments that are quick and easy to use with the weed. The TC3012 comes standard equipped with a side mounted boom mower that can be used to cut weeds beneath the surface down to a depth of five foot, but can also be articulated at different angles and different depths for a variety of slopes and embankments throughout your waterway. Some of the weeds that you'll be dealing with using your cutter are going to be the Eurasian water milfoil, hydrilla, and cattails. Uh, once they're cut, they're going to float up to the surface, and that's where you'll use the front end loader to skim and harvest that vegetation off the surface. One of the really cool quick change implements for the we do, it's actually my favorite, is the we do root rig. This coupled to the front of the boat takes a few moments to switch over. You can use a root rig to rip and tear out vegetation such as cattails right from the bottom of the shoreline. And once you can get the roots of these materials out of there, you're not going to have to deal with them growing back. Some other water pollutants you'll come across can be garbage and fish kill. A really cool device for removing these materials from the water is a weed skimmer bucket. It's part of the front end loader quick change attachment. Swaps out really easily and is very effective at harvesting fine materials that you'll find 
intertwined with the garbage in the waterways. One of the worst things we can have in our waterways are oil or gas bills. Fortunately, we do have an attachment for that as well. We have a we do oil and gas bill attachment that once again quickly connects to the front end motor and attaches to the built-in hydraulic system to operate a patented rotary drum that easily separates the oil or gas from the surface, skims it off, and contains it into a drum. The last side we have to look at is a very powerful one. As you'll notice, the image on the right is somebody using chemical herbicides to spray and kill the aquatic vegetation. Whereas the slide to the left, you'll see it's been treated mechanically and the vegetation is being extracted, harvested, and removed from the waterway. The main difference you'll see is the dark, murky water. This is it, folks. What does is lowers oxygen levels, creates an unhealthy waterway environment, and over time, builds up detritus waste. After years of treatment with chemical and herbicide spray and the detritus waste starts to build up, we do has a very effective quick change attachment for cleaning up these waterways as well. Our We Do Silt Sucker Plus is a mini hydraulic dredge that couples to the front of the boat and uses a hydraulic uh, agitating head to stir up and suck the detritus waste, the muck, the sediment off the bottom and remove it from the lake, can discharge it through a three inch hose off the back of the boat up to a distance of 300 feet. Now that we've learned more about some of the We Do Quick Change attachments, let's take a look in the shop, give you a brief overview of your boat, and then we'll go down the water and do some more training. All right, those are pretty cool boats, huh? Yeah, I think it would work actually really well for uh, our lake. Uh, I did talk to Bobby Shields of them, and I said, hey, what do these things run? You know, are these things 50 grand? Or are they a million dollars? What are they? They're about $100,000, so they're not crazy. But it's something that we could definitely use. So what we're realizing is we've sprayed for years. And like he showed us, it's going to start cutting down your oxygen levels. And spraying works. Spraying is made to kill weeds. And there's a lot of invasive weeds that we have to spray for in Earl Lake. We're going to have to continue to spray for in Earl Lake. That's not going to go away. However, it's time to restore Earl Lake with a weed harvesting system and then continue to maintain with spraying when we have an algae breakout, when we have a spot of uh, invasive species. So we can hop to that really quickly by ourselves. So now let's look at our Earl Lake inlets and outlets. One of the big problems we do have is Earl Lake Salty and it's stagnant and that's the reason why. There's no water really truly coming in and going out and I want to show you where these inlets and outlets are. This is Ann McIntyre's property right where all the water comes in and as you can see she can't even take a boat out. It's completely flooded. And if we look at my property, not as bad as Ann's here, but this is more uh, quick aqua thruster footage. All right, folks, the next morning, everything's starting to really clean out, clear up, starting to look beautiful. I can't tell it is, it is massive bath. Yeah, this one. Let's see that next one here, actually. Okay, so when we first moved to Earl Lake, I said, how big is this lake? And I forget who I asked, but they said, oh, Earl Lake's around 60 acres. That's, is that what we've all kind of learned and known, 60 acres? 53? Okay, 53. Uh, I plotted it out here. Yeah, it was around 46, so 53 is probably right on the button. I just did this quickly on a satellite. So that's the good news here is that's where we're at. And that's your shoreline of Earl Lake, and that is not the uh, canal at all. Now, believe it or not, you have a canal back here that runs, and there's two beautiful secret lakes back here, or that's what I call them, the canal to the secret lakes. 
When you come back here, which it's, it's pretty blocked up and it's hard to get back there, this first lake I have been to, and it's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. The water's clear. There's tons of fish back there, big crappie. Then there's a small footpath to this lake because it's just been overgrown. Hello? Yeah. All right, it's just been overgrown. So if we actually did cut a path back to these secret lakes, we would gain an extra 8.12 acres or another almost nautical mile of shoreline. Now what's our usable lake size? And this is what I'm just guessing. So if you look at all this, this is your detritus voice that he was talking about. And I'm not saying we need to move it all. But if you look at the usable lake, for instance, here's my property. To get my jet ski out, I have to paddle it past the weed layer. Detritus. detritus waste layer. We don't need that, do we? All right. So to get past that detritus waste layer, it's going to be about, I think it's 60 feet from my shoreline. I get the jet ski out, and then in this circle, I can have a blast. The problem is, I can't go to the sea.